Welcome to Invest Smarter. In this video, Jeff and I discuss the recent market bottoms. By the end of this video, you'll have a better view of what has been driving the markets and what might drive them going forward. I'm joined this morning by Jeff Wisnowski, who's our Chief Operating Officer at Clear Capital Management. Morning, Jeff. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. Good. Jeff's an expert in classical technical analysis, and he's been a professional trader trading equities and interest rate-based instruments for over 30 years. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Good. So, Jeff, you, you have a different perspective on the markets. You know, we at Clear Capital Management, you've been part of this. We've been developing these new metrics to help us sort through what's going in, on in the markets but you're very much an expert in what I call classical technical analysis. You've also had many, many years of trading interest rate sensitive instruments. So you have an interesting view of the Fed. Can you explain a little bit what you see going on? I know you've said the markets aren't going to start to recover until they recognize that the Fed has stopped tightening. And you've also talked about some technical indicators that you see that show you that we're not quite there yet. So you, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. As far as the market moving, when it sees that the Fed is near completion, I. I lived through the, the uh, Greenspan era, um, and I, you know, I painfully learned a lot from it. And mm -hmm. um, what the stock market is looking for is some sort of indication that the Fed is close to finishing, or is finished. The market does not like not knowing, and mm -hmm. until it has a good grasp of where the Fed is going to go it's not going to rebound to any any there'll be some minor moves up but they'll be squashed um mm -hmm. until until the market knows that the fed is ready to move and um, right now we don't know that yet now in a video that i shared with you earlier today uh kathy wood was talking about the fact that she thinks the fed's being too aggressive and she sees some signs that she hopes the Fed will recognize that deflation is starting to happen and they'll back off and, and, and real GDP growth is, is really waning and there's a lot of pressure on the economy. She's hoping they'll back off on their 75 basis point increase and, and uh, you know she even mentioned possibly a 25 basis point instead of 75 basis point increase. What effect do you think that would have on the markets if they went 25 or 50 instead of 75 basis points? I, I think that that would help a lot. What I, I actually saw something, a news thing, where some of the com some of the companies now, if you take back something, they don't want it. They want you to keep it, even though they'll refund the money. And that would be an indication to me that yes, they have too much inventory, and it's not good inventory. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, in that, in that same video, she talked about uh, Costco, uh, Target, and Walmart, three of the best inventory management companies in the world, having 30 to 40% too much inventory. So that tells everything, right? Right. And so right now, though, where the Fed is, as far as the market is concerned, it's still favoring a 75-point in increase. But we have non-farm payrolls coming out next Friday. And we also have uh, CPI coming out, I, think, I believe, two weeks after that. And those will be strong indicators of where the Fed will go. The Fed, I don't believe now, is, is looking at that inventory issue yet. They're still mm -hmm. looking at inflation. Um, but um, they, they could be telling. Um, I mean, they, the market had a bad surprise last month, um, and when the, when the indicators came out stronger, and that's and we, and we paid the price for it. And now we just got to hope that this starts ameliorating and, and uh, going the way the Fed expects it to go. Now you've you've talked about in the past. Uh, there's a there's an indicator. I guess it's based off of options trading on investing.com where they they show the likely probability of the Fed raising by a half 
by 50 basis points, half a percent, or by 75 basis points, three quarters of a percent. Let me share my screen here and we can talk about that. This is investing.com and you can see the Fed rate monitor tool here. What is this exactly in your opinion? What is this expressing here? This is basically what the market views is the, the chances of the Fed going 75 versus 50. Uh, 225 to 250 is 75. 2 to 225 okay. is, is 50. And right now, okay. it's 86.2% chance of, of them going 75. And the Fed, if, it, if, if, if this means, maintains, the Fed will go 85. The Fed does not like fooling the markets. Okay, so this could actually lead the Fed into raising 75 basis points, based on what you're saying. Yes, but again, I, I, we still have some uh, telling numbers within the next two weeks that could very much influence these numbers. So. Okay, so these could shift a lot. Correct. Is there anything else we should talk about on here? You should also keep in t- keep um, cognizant of what the rest of the, uh, the world is doing. If London's raising rates or Japan's raising rates, the, the Fed will stay in sync with what they're doing. So you're talking about this this table up here where it's showing the last change? Yeah. Now, interesting, Bank of Japan actually lowered their interest rate here. That's or, and Well, yeah, Russia is an outlier. And China lowered theirs. Uh, European Central Bank lowered theirs. Interesting. Yeah. They may be fine. They may be seeing the uh, inflation issue um, lessening in intensity there. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after a little bit of a lighting adjustment here, um, let's talk about, you, you mentioned last week that you saw something in the candles that didn't look like it was where you wanted it to be. All right. I've got spy up here, but you want me to put the cues up, right? It's, it's funny. Um, the Qs have a, a much sooner turning point than SPY. Oh, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I see that all the time that they tend to lead. Let's go back all to right. four four. So go back to four four. So now you see, this is a trend line, a downward trending line, and what you're seeing here is that the, the market has been in a, a steady decline since, well, actually since uh, January uh, January third, I think. But right, January 3rd is where the market peaked right. out, Both, I think both the S&P and so the really have, NASDAQ. So you have really two trend lines. The other one is, is from January 3rd to 4-4, and then that will go much higher. But until the market uh, goes through this line, um, there's no chance of a rebound, which is sort of, of course, if it goes through the line, it's, it has to have rebound. <laughs> but there's mm-hmm. no ser- chance of a serious rebound. In fact, as, as you can see, it's hit here three times and bounced off. Um, right. Well, it's, it looks like it's hit twice, right? Well, it, three look, times. It, uh, the top. Well, the top. Oh, the t- oh, top, and then and, here. Uh, yeah, right, and then this. So and then takes, here. Okay. It, it takes actually, okay. It takes three points to make a trend line, and so those, okay. those are the three points. So this this is what's happening. Now, what you can look for is a day where you're going to have a lot of activity. Mm-hmm. In, in the business, we call it a puke. Oh, you mean you mean high volume high like vo- back here? High volume and the market's going up and down, up and down, and you'll right. get a, you'll get a fairly substantial candle, meaning a, a huge hammer with a long tail or you know a, a mess. Kind of like this this candle here. Correct. I mean that's not that's not truly a candle. Uh, the, 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 the the shadow actually has the. the, the Thing has to be one third of the size the size of the. Uh, oh, so so this box on the top needs to be smaller right, and toward right. the top. Right. Right. But it, it, okay, got it. But it's also but it, it's it's an, it's an indication, and and that which this had, right. but it didn't but it didn't quite qualify. Okay. So basically, if you see that, there's a good indication to market, and it, and it goes through that trend line. There's a good chance you're going to get a sizable uh, rebound. You know, is it mm-hmm. going to go all the way up? You know, I, I think we need to um, know whether we're going to go through in a recession still, and 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 the Russian war will have an effect. If that is sort of uh, calming down, that will help. But uh, but if if I was a gambling man, I, I I'd buy something in here, and 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 you're, and you're probably going to make some money on the idea. Uh, I wouldn't make any big bets. Yeah, so a little bit of bottom fishing here is what you're saying. You take take a risk. You're saying, okay, everything's been blown out pretty far. I'm going to take a risk and start maybe dollar cost averaging in here. Right, and I, right, I, I, buy, buying on the dips. Yeah. One last thing though, you, um, you'd like to see the technical uh, stocks moving up too, um, and they should actually lead this. So we'll see. 
So when you say the, the Qs are considered the technical right. stocks. So, right. So that basically, you, if, if they're busting through and they're having a lot of volume, uh, that's what you want to see. You may even see the value stocks even go down. Uh, but that, right, like the Dow. Right, right, the Dow. And right. The, the, Dow, the Dow giving up leadership to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the Qs, to NASDAQ. And in fact, what we've been seeing through almost all of this downturn is the Dow stocks will perform better than the rest, better than the S&P, and definitely better than the tech. Right. Tech has been the worst performing sector. And that, <clears> right. and it, it has been severely beaten up. Do you want to look at the S&P 500? Sure, you can look at that one. It's, uh, you'll see that this one has a longer comeback period. Okay, so now we're looking at the S&P 500. So where should should I again start here? And you, okay. And now you can see that this trend line is is a little uh, farther away from turning, mm -hmm. which I'm finding interesting. <laughs> so so tech is leading; it's closer to the trend line, right. and and the S and P, which is a much more broad index, is uh, lagging. It's not leading to the trend line, correct? Which 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 you would expect at a bottom, because we've seen this over and over again in previous downturns. Uh, the Qs tend to be the leaders out of the bottom. Right. And if you wait for the S&P to turn, you may be, you may be late in, in getting in uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the rebound. You know, otherwise, it's, you know, it's just going to be a dead bet. You know, anything else beyond what I'm saying is just probably going to be a dead cat bounce. It's going to hit, go up to the line, bounce off, and come off. Do you want to take a look at how our oscillators are looking relative to this conversation? I'm just curious. I don't know sure. if I'll publish this or not, but let's take a look. So here we are in the Qs. And you can see back here, uh, the buying pressure was uh, above the selling pressure. So the selling pressure is the orange solid line. Buying pressure is the solid gray line. And then the black line is the price of the Qs. So back here, the Qs started sort of leading us out. I, I think that was a, an oversold position that basically, and, and that's why you got this, this bounce. So we got, yeah, that was around the, the 15th or 16th of June. Uh, the buying pressure started increasing and then it dropped off again here. So let's contrast that with the S&P 500 or SPY. So now if we contrast that with SPY, yeah, you know, interesting, Jeff, um, the selling pressure stayed stayed above the buying pressure way back here right. and 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 tried to make a comeback but it, it didn't make it that's quite a contrast yeah. so this this looks like there's better buying pressure here now let me wait a minute are these different scales no that's the same scale right. zero to 20 and wow uh, that's quite a that's quite a contrast so much less selling pressure here uh, better buying pressure here and that you compare that to SPY, huge selling pressure relative to the buying pressure. And then never, you know, the buying pressure never really gaining any traction. I have to tell here. you, um, what I noticed is that uh, last month, the, the S&P actually fell more than, than, than the Qs. It was yeah, and you can't, you can't really see that in this price because this is linear. Uh, it's not logarithmic, so you really can't take that from this price chart. But I, 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 I believe you. <laughs> I mean, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find that basically it, what's happening now is, is technology is so beat up that it's, it's sort of holding a vision. It's not rebounding. It's just it's, it's getting to a point where it doesn't want to. It, 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 it's, if it goes lower, people are going to buy it. Yeah, usually it's more like this, right? Over three months or six months, right. right? Where the queues are clearly underperforming year to date. You'll probably see it even more. Well, that is six months, just about. So, so the queues, you know, the tech stocks clearly got bashed more than the S and P five hundred here. But now, what you're saying, and it makes sense, in the last okay. month they've been tracking pretty closely. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, actually, in the end, in the end, the queues did beat it, but just but slightly, very slightly. I mean, so, but they're tracking, which is a, which is definitely a change. It's definitely a change. I mean, uh, the queues were getting tortured <laughs> as compared to everything else. Uh, well, let's put the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, over the past month, the, the value stocks are still performing better. better. And if we certainly, if we look over three months, they're the best. Over six months, they're the best. So, yeah, no surprises there. So, we need to see the queues sort of turn up. And, and out, start outperforming these, which will also be an indication of the bottom, right? Right. That's what that's what you're going to be looking for. Concentrate not on the S and P, but on the Qs. Um, right. Because they'll that, be the that leaders. Will drag the S and P up, back up. 
Well, let's let's do something kind of funny here. Let's let's take arc, which is really the extreme end of the queues, right? It's the very high innovation stocks. Let's let's throw that one up here. Uh, let's change the color though. Actually, this so it's is, a little. This has done very well. Wow. Okay. So clearly, what this says to me, you know, the the arc has been. I mean, it's been more volatile, but boy, when it goes up, it just launches. Uh, way above everything else. What this says to me, when I see investors throwing money into the highest risk stocks, which is, you know, Kathy Wood would argue with me. She'd say, these are the lowest risk stocks right now. Well, and I, I, I understand her viewpoint and, and agree with it. Well, it to all some depends on you measure it, uh, as volatility or the ability or, to or potential down. return. Yeah, we'll yes. Yeah. Yes. So, but my view, and I've seen this over and over again as we've watched the markets, is that investors tend to sell their higher risk stocks first at the beginning of a downturn. They get out of the ones they think are the riskiest first, right? So you'll see the small caps drop, you'll see the Qs drop while the S&P and the Dow kind of hold up, and then everything starts taking a turn. And then at the bottom, the same sort of thing happens except in opposite. So they start buying the riskiest assets first. They buy the ones where they think they're gonna get the biggest returns because they've dropped the most. And then they and then eventually they start buying into the rest of the market. They start dipping their toe into here and, and then if you've got some good you know, you get some good numbers and they're already, you know, ahead of the game. Yeah. And, but, and so you can nothing's telling can, me right now to get in, but but people are, are, are still getting in slightly. Yeah, they're, they're dipping their toes here. You can see that here, right? You can see the markets went up. This one went up a lot. Now, people would argue, well, that's just because it's got more volatility. But I think it, ultimately this is going to lead us out of this bottom whenever that is. Right. I mean, and, you know, and, and this, what's interesting is this next time, I mean, you, you, around the, what, the 13th or the 16th, you had ARC being at, you know, at the bottom. You know that line bank, and the next time it goes down here around you know the beginning end of end of uh, June, early July, it's, it's well. This it, is it's, this is uh, this is June sixteenth here. June 16th. So you're saying the next time it went down less, these went down more, right? And this one actually went went up, right? right? Just, From I'm here to that, here is up. But I'm also looking at uh, June thirtieth. That, that oh, so you're looking there, up here. That bottom there, compared to those other bottoms, it nearly did go near nearly as low as the S and P or the Qs or anything. So, right. I mean, it's getting to a point where people aren't selling the techs. Right. Well, and what's interesting is back here, I thought you were talking about back here. On the 13th, this bottomed out, and then it came up a little bit, as did these. But then these these other ones, the S and P, the Qs, bottom, and, and they bottom. they had a lower bottom. This one had a higher bottom. So there there's some there's starting to be some support for uh, you know extremely risky uh, innovation stocks. Um, but again, as Kathy Wood would say, those are the least risky stocks to be in. Um, all right, cool. Let let let's take a look at um, stochastics. Just our stochastics indicators. Just for the heck of it. All right. So here on the on the cues, uh, you know, we had a, we had a breakout here. Uh, it failed. Had another breakout here. It failed. And it looks like it's trying to uh, recoup here. It's just touching this this green line, which is uh, this red line, sort of classical percent D. Uh, and this green line is our version of percent D. Uh, and then uh, the blue line is percent %K. So when percent %K is above percent %D, either one of these versions, that's good. Um, and it's just heading in the right direction here. And this again is the price. Again, so let's look at... Again, you're not getting the down, dropping down to the to zero where it has been uh, most of this period. Uh, but I don't like the fact that the, 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 the peaks on the blue are still uh, less and less intense. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna need that to break out. Yes, exactly. Yeah, th this this trend line's not good, right? right. Um, so so here, uh, it looks like this is actually broken through. Um, so that's actually a little bit in opposition to what we were talking about earlier, where the cues actually look better. But this is this is measuring purely price movement, relative price movement, where the um, the oscillators, for example. 
are measuring uh, buying and selling pressure. It's a whole different measurement. So this is very telling here that this is doing better, much better than this one. We didn't look at the Dow at all. Ah, Dow, Dow very much like the S&P 500. Right. Look at this. Lots of selling pressure, uh, a lot of it here. Just like the just like the spy, so it looks like people are starting to go into the queues. This could be this could be good. It, it, oh, we'll have to it, wait and it, see. It could be the start. You know, we're halfway through the year. Um, the Fed is Fed, trust them or not, said that as as time goes on, uh, inflation pressure will become less and less. I, I tend to believe Kathy Woods uh, that we are in a, a, a disinflationary. Uh, um, period but the fed hasn't realized it yet <laughs> well and, and funny i just brought up arc the arc oscillators and you can see just like the cues this has been had more buying pressure than selling pressure so this this is this is in line with what we're seeing here with with the cues versus the spy the s p 500 and the dow jones industrial average what, what about small caps? What are we seeing there? Let's take a look. Huh, again, risky investments, better, more buying pressure. So this could be an indication that we're at or near the bottom. All right, very interesting. Yeah, and that, that lines up with another indicator that we have. So let's take a look at that. So this is another indicator that we've developed recently, um, which is kind of looking hopeful, let's put it that way. And what you're looking at here, the black line is, is the price of the S&P 500. The orange line is basically telling you, an it's, an, it's a first bottom indicator is, what, is what, the way I would describe it without giving away what we're doing. So it's, it's an indication that you've seen a first bottom. And what, and what do you need for this to do to see a first bottom? Well, you can see over here, this thing was at 100% here, but this confirming indicator the stash line was only at 84 percent so that's not a very good indication of a bottom and you can see we didn't have a bottom there nor nor did we have one anywhere along here because it tried to rally and then bottomed more so now let's look at this bot this first indication of a bottom here this went to 100 percent stayed there for many days and the confirming piece was at 99%. This is a very strong indication of a, a first bottom indicator. So this is a very strong indication that this is potentially a bottom. But you need for this blue line, the confirming second bottom indicator to go up here to, it would like to see it at 100% in com combination with this confirmation being almost at 100%. Now, the fact that this hit 90% here and we're sitting at 85, it's pretty good. I'd really like to see this. I'd like to see this continue higher and, and to really confirm that we've seen a bottom here. Uh, but look, this doesn't have to happen right away. This could take weeks, could take days, could take months until this finally really reaches up here and confirms. So we, I think we're, we're in agreement. It, it looks like we could be at a bottom, but we need we need for this to play out. Correct. And, which, uh, and you know, I'd be, my tongue would be cut out at most um, <laughs> tactical meetings if I, I used um, fundamentals to tell you about tacticals. Um, <laughs> you, just don't, you just don't do that. But, right. but the truth of the matter is there are two fundamental numbers that are going to come out over the next two weeks that could make the tacticals perform like we're we're getting out of here we're getting out of the bottom but um, jeff that's the reality right okay. news moves the markets yeah, right. I, I call it news slash noise um, no well we had the, well we had the fed telling us that uh, they're done highly unlikely i i think they're going to need at least two two months of of uh, help of um, good numbers before they even start even indicating a slight chance of that so it may mm -hmm. take it may take a little while here. We, you know, it could be September, you know, October before we get, you know, really where the market may make a move. All right. Well, that sounds pretty reasonable. Hopefully, it'll happen sooner yeah, than that. Yes. You know, I think it's oversold. You know, it's, it'll it, you can stay you can stay oversold for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, you can. So this is um, this has been good. I think our viewers will enjoy this 
you know, this view of the markets, which kind of, we're kind of bridging the gap, right? We're talking about sort of old school analysis combined with our new school uh, metrics and thinking. And they seem pretty much in alignment right now. They seem, yeah, exactly. It was very educational even for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Jeff. Um, this has been really helpful, and uh, we'll do some more of these in the future. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, it's now Sunday morning, July 3rd, the day after Jeff and I recorded that interview. And after staying up till 2.30 in the morning last night, editing all of this, uh, it really occurred to me there's a lot of good data in here. And, you know, there's a lot of data pointing to the fact that we might be getting close to the bottom if we haven't already seen it. So, curious, what do you think? Please put some comments below. Let me know what you think. If you have some data that complements or con contrasts what we talked about, please post it. Love to see it. Hey, thank you for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's several ways on Patreon for you to support the channel and access exclusive content, including special posts on the markets, educational materials about how to select investments and manage your portfolio. And at the investor level, you'll have full access to our natural selection stock rankings so you can evaluate individual stocks or market sectors that fit your investment style. Check out the link at the pinned comments below and thank you for your support. Thank you for watching today. If you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you won't miss an upcoming episode of Invest Smarter. That's all for now. Thank you.